Hey everybody, it is video update, update time. So this is an update on my air bike ultralight project. And I've got a bunch to talk about. I'm gonna to try to keep this video short um, as I can. But uh, I'm gonna start with the wheels. So I did some research and found some wheels I liked. And these don't come silver. I actually painted these silver with that aluminum paint or whatever it's called. But these are some type of a very high impact type plastic. The website I found this at actually was through Amazon. It's, it's, it's a weird wheel because on it, it says it's a 5 8 inch bearing for a half inch shaft. Which I found really bizarre because I've dealt a lot with, with bearings. And normally they go by what the inner diameter is and then you look at what the outer diameter is to see if it's going to fit within whatever you're putting it in. So I bought these and it was in fact a half inch bearing for a half inch shaft. I'm using 5 eighths inch shafts. So I popped these bearings out, went to McMaster Car and found a 5 eighths inch bearing with the same um, uh, outer diameter, OD, that I could press into these. So I've got the 5 8 inch bearings in here. Um, I think these were about 50 bucks a piece or 40 bucks. I should have looked that up and I didn't, I apologize. But I really am super excited about these tires. Oh. So these are what I'm gonna put on the plane. Now I experimented with wheelbarrow wheels. And if you don't know what a wheelbarrow is, you're probably a millennial. And, and I'm joking, I'm sorry, but I'm not. But um, if you've ever done any lawn work or heavy duty concrete work or anything, you know what a wheelbarrow is. But I bought these off uh, Amazon too, and they're actually kick ass. The problem is, is that they're welded together, the two halves. And I, I have to take the tire off here, which is a bitch, because these two um, rim halves don't split. Um, I could drill holes all the way around here and put like, um, 1024s in here to make sure the two halves stay together, but um, I like these because they're a bigger diameter and they're very light, but I don't know what that, that rim's made out of, so I don't know if I'll ever use these. If I get bored, I might take the tires off and look if, and see if there's a welded bead in there, and if there's not, I might take my TIG and go in there and weld a bead, but I don't know what holds these two rim halves together. Next, I want to talk about the, um, a, a little cheat or a little trick I have. So on my axles, and the, I'm sorry, on my landing gear, I have my axles. Now, one thing that I'm, I got to find out, and I think I'm okay, but I went and bought grade 8 bolts. and cut them off to make my axles. I know three other air bikes that were built this way. Some people say you have to have an axle shaft, which is hardened. Um, a grade eight is pretty freaking strong, people. Um, but the reason I went to grade eight is because these cost like eight bucks a piece, and the hard axles are fifty dollars a piece. And as I was afraid, being the first time I welded these axles to these uh, landing gear legs, I might screw it up. So this worked perfect. I'm going to do some testing and just see how strong these really are. But I think these will be fine. The worst thing that could happen is me have a hard landing and this bend a little bit. Um, but I am going to test them. If you know me, I test everything, people, okay? Now, on this, you're supposed to slide on a washer and put this washer on the shaft. And then you want it to be perfectly square so that if the wheel rubs up against it, it's got a perfectly flat surface. Two issues with this. I couldn't find a washer that fit that snug and tight on my axle. So I took the 0.9 thickness sheet 4130 chromoly, um, drilled at first a 3 8 inch hole in it, roughly cut the diam diameter of this, and then put it in my lathe, and then used my lathe to make this perfectly circular. Then I popped it out and drilled a 5 8 inch hole in it, and it fits as snug as a bug in a rug. Now, how do you get that exactly square? You do it by sliding on, a 5 inch inner diameter chromoly tubing. You put on a nut. And because I'm a little bit lazy, I'm just going to run that sucker on there. 
And now keep in mind, this piece of tubing I slid on here, I put my lathe to make sure I had a perfectly square end. Now that will hold it perfectly square for me to take my TIG welder and put in a bead around the back of it. And then I'll just... pop this off, and that will be welded on there perfectly straight. Okay, so that is extremely cool. Next thing I wanna talk about is my rudders. I'm sorry, rudder pedals and my rudder. So this is the way that the rudder pedal on an air bike fits, works. It sits out here on the end of this tubing. This tube goes through my fuselage. I put my heel in here, and that's how my rudder pedal works, okay? There's a small hole here that's gonna have a bolt come out, and I'll have my aircraft cable come off that bolt that goes back to the rudder horn. You buy the um, outside, um, oh, I can't remember what you call this, but this is for a bicycle shifter cable, and this is the outside tubing or holder, and this is the 16th inch aircraft cable that goes inside it. I've already had a hater send me an email saying, you know, Damon, you can't use 16th inch aircraft cable. It's, 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 it's dangerous. Well, almost all the air bikes have it, and just so you know, this is rated for 96 pounds, which means rated. It's going to be really hard with my foot to push more than 96 pounds, but the braking strength of this is 480 pounds. Okay, so this cable is fine, people. I'll inspect it once a year to make sure I'm not getting any frays or anything. I'm not scared of that. And the last really cool thing, I'm going to scoot up a little bit. I got my fuel tank done, everybody. So, on the bottom of the fuel tank, I've actually got a sump place that I can drain water if there's any water buildup in the fuel tank. I went to a really cool website and bought me the valve that goes on the bottom of a gas tank of a Harley Davidson motorcycle. So, I can shut this off when I'm not flying it, or I can turn it on. Technically, there is a reserve here, and the way this reserve works, and I don't know if you know this, but the way that the fuel tanks in a motorcycle works is there's a small hole here, and then there's a hole up here. When you're on your main tank, you're draining from the top brass tubing. But when you flip this to reserve, it will drain down to here. So if you're driving, driving a motorcycle and the engine dies, you still have about an inch and a quarter of gas left in the fuel tank, when you flick to reserve. Now, I do not plan on using that in my airplane because that, the way my tank is angled, when, if I were to have, start to run out of gas and flip to it, I've probably got a pint, not even a quart of gas in there. So, um, and there's been a lot of people asking me, you know, Damon, you said in your other video, you've got a fuel gauge on your, your fuel tank. We don't see it. Well, the reason you didn't see it is if you look right here, I have an elbow and an elbow and a, a piece of fuel um, uh, gasoline rated clear tubing. So when I'm flying along, this tank will be at about this angle here. So if you draw a line through it, I'll have a mark right here that shows a half a tank. So if the gas fills up this entire tube, I know I've got more than a half a tank. When I see the gas start to bob around here, I know I got a half a tank. When I get to it here, it's about a quarter tank, and that's when I'm gonna be landing, okay? So that's my, that's my fuel gauge, everybody. This is my vent tube, and right now this holds 4.1 gallons. So I'm 0.9 gallons short of the five gallon uh, limit. So if you think about the nose of my um, air bike right here, I needed to get this fuel tank to fit in the nose here. Okay, I hope you can see this on the video. Um, and the only physical size I could get in here was this size. I couldn't make it any bigger. So I've got um, 4.1 gallons of gas that's going to sit in the nose of this. It looks like it's going to be good for about 2 hours and 20 minutes of flying, 2 hours and 15. So if I fly an hour and a half um, or an hour and 35 minutes, something like that, that's going to be plenty for an ultralight for me to go back and get more gas. Um, I do have kind of a crazy idea, and I don't know if I'll do this, okay, everybody? Um, so don't send me a bunch of emails telling me it's stupid because I don't care. I think it's a cool idea. Sitting on top of the fuselage right here is a big box tube of aluminum, and it's hollow. It's a tube, square tube. I'm sorry. It goes out to my motor mount. 
I may, right on top of this tubing, take a piece of four inch aluminum tubing, on top of the square tubing, take a piece of four inch aluminum round and weld on caps and make it hold 0.9 gallons. So I could have a very small 0.9 gallon gas tank up here that's technically my reserve tank. Put a second vent right here. It wouldn't be a vent, it'd be a, a drain. So if I'm flying along and I'm still got a heavy headwind, keep in mind the maximum speed of this to be part one of three is 55, mile not, 55 knots, okay? So let's say I'm 10 miles from the field and I've got a 40 knot headwind. I might be taking a long time to get back to the field, okay? Let's say I screwed up. It would be kind of cool if I see the gas getting down here pretty low, if I just flipped a valve on the bottom of this point down ga gallon gas tank and saw basically a gallon of gas go into this as my reserve. I don't know if I'm gonna go there, and if I do, um, it might be really cool. But that's this update. Oh, one last thing. I have a whole bunch of people. Oh, and yes, just to answer everybody, I pressure tested this. I don't know why so many people want to know if I pressure tested this fuel tank, okay? And if you don't know what pressure testing, pressure testing a fuel tank is, you only take it up to about 5 PSI or 4 PSI. You don't put a lot in there. And what you're doing is you're putting it in there. You fill this full of as much liquid as you can. Keep in mind, you can't compress a liquid. So if you fill this up all the way to the top, it's hard to get a true 4 or 5 PSI in there. So you want to fill it all the way up to this well, but at least leave the neck empty here. And you put four PSI in there and let it sit for 48 hours. You come back and check it. And if the four PSI is still there, you know that that tank is not leaking anywhere. Okay? Um, but a big controversy came up with, was I going to put isolation dampeners or, or isolation rubber mounts on the fuel tank? And two um, A&P mechanics emailed me and said, Damon, very few airplanes have the fuel tanks on isolation dampeners. And, he's, and they said, we understand on ultralight you have, might have more vibration, but, but you know, Avgas or what I'm going to buy is, you know, auto fuel, it doesn't foam up that much or if all, at all. It just sloshes around on the fuel tank. So they said, you don't need to put isolation dampener, but I'm still going to do it, people. The reason I like it is, and this is something that most people don't understand. Um, I used to weld up a lot of buggies, okay? I used to modify go-karts. And if you've got something that's really rigid in a frame and that frame's moving around, you can break welds. Now, I don't think this frame is going to move around much, but I learned a long time ago when I'm mounting anything within a structure, I do use some type of an isolation dampener so if there's any torquing or moving here, the rubber here gives you some movement. So I'm not sure how good you can see it, but I have tabs. I have tabs right here, four of them that hold my fuel tank in. I know this frame's not gonna move enough that those could move and the welds would slowly break, but it's just a good practice to put something in there to let it move a little bit if you need it to move, okay? Because the more rigid it is, the more it wants to bend on welds and stuff. So um, that's this update. So um, I'm gonna try to once a week get an air bike update. I'm also trying once a week get um, on how to create dis different systems for the RC um, uh, fans I have. I'm getting ready to do um, how to build landing gear for a C-130, the jack screws, the lead screws. I'm getting ready to do a video on um, the flat systems for B-36s and, uh, and of course the air bike. So my next thing I'm doing on the air bike right now is there's little bitty chromoly tubing that has to be welded down the fuselage that are the guides for my rudder cables. I'm gonna to try to today, which is Sunday, don't know when you're going to be watching this. Hopefully I get this posted sometime today. But, <coughs> excuse me, I'm hoping to get the rudder cables mounts that holds this on, uh, uh, TIG welded onto the fuselage today. And, um, oh, and I've gotten quite a bit of emails. Am I getting an awful lot done with this whole corona thing going on? I am getting more done because I'm not traveling on the weekends to fly-ins and I'm not... I'm home in the evening a lot, which normally I'd be traveling for work. So yes, I am, but I'm lucky. My job is very busy right now. It has not affected the job I have, and I'm blessed to be one of those few that it's really not impacting me. 
So I'm not just spending all my time playing with model aviation or full scale aviation right now, people. I still got a lot going on with work and um, actually a lot of this being at home time with my family has been really, really cool. So I will try to get another update in the next week. Do me a favor, everybody. If you're watching this and you like it, subscribe to it. The reason I'm begging you to do that now is I have a lot of people will email me sometimes five or six times during the week saying, hey, when's your next video? And I've already posted a video. If you subscribe to this, you will get updates when the video is posted. You'll get an email. So um, rock on, everybody, and I hope you're having a great day. Please stay safe and take care of yourselves and use some common sense. And uh, I'll see you next time. Rock on. Be safe, everybody. Bye.